Cacio e Pepe is creamy, it's cheesy, it's rich, and it's got a bite. How do you get Cacio e Pepe creamy like this? It's actually a lot easier than you think, and I'm gonna give you the secret. Welcome to Actually Italian. I'm Sal. I've been living in Italy for years now, so I'm really excited to teach you some authentic recipes so you can cook like an actual Italian, like this cacio e pepe from Rome. It's one of the holy trinity of Roman pastas. You've got cacio e pepe, you've got carbonara, and amatriciana. Cacio e pepe only has three ingredients. It's pecorino cheese, pepper, and pasta. That's it. So what's the secret? Well, the secret is real simple. What you need to do is just follow a, a few basic steps to be able to pull this together. And it does take practice too, so you might have to make it a couple of times. In this video, I'm gonna break down those essentials so that way you can get it right. Let's get started. Step number one, pick the right cheese. The cheese used in the Cacio e Pepe in Rome is Pecorino Romano. What you wanna look for is a whole piece that you're gonna grate yourself. It should be hard, it should be a, a cheese that's dried and aged. If you can't find a whole piece of Pecorino Romano, the most important thing to look for is any Pecorino cheese that's gonna be hard, that you can grate. In fact, where I am in Italy, I'm in the Northeast, Cacio Pepe isn't really a thing, so we don't have a lot of Pecorino Romano to choose from. I got a piece of Sicilian Pecorino with the pepper in it, since it's a pepper dish, this works well anyway. That's of the age that I want it. If you use a fresher, kind of softer Pecorino, you're not gonna be able to grate it properly, and the grating actually is important. Step two, make sure to use the right grater. When you grate it, you want to use that old-fashioned type of grater where you can see it's almost like punched through. That's going to give you a nice, fine, almost powder-like texture. You can see side by side here. If I used one of those graters, almost like a plain grater, you can see that it looks a little shredded. That's going to have a hard time incorporating into the sauce. On the other hand, when you use one of those old-fashioned graters, you can see it's almost like a powder. You're probably thinking like, well, why not just buy the pre-grated stuff? It has the perfect texture. Well, it also has all kinds of other stuff in it. A lot of them have like these anti-caking agents, so it's not gonna incorporate well into the sauce. You're not gonna have the right effect. The flavor's gonna be off. It's just not worth it to make if you can't get good pecorino. By the way, I've got a link to the principal recipe in the description box below. That's where you get all the measurements and all the ingredients that you need. Step three, pick the right pasta. Using the right pasta means you want to get a pasta that's been extruded with the bronze dye because what that does is it gives it a texture. It's almost like a rough surface. That rough surface is gonna make for extra starch that's gonna go into the finished product to make it creamy. It also helps the sauce adhere to the pasta. What you wanna look for on the package is essiccazione lenta. That means that it took a long time to dry so you get a good texture. The other thing to look for is a word if you're getting your pasta imported, trafilata a bronzo. That means that they extruded the pasta using bronze dyes. It creates like a rough edge on the pasta. You can also look at the pasta to see if it's gonna be right or not. Take a look at these two pastas side by side. One is very pale and you can see it has a rough surface. The other one is a little bit orange. It's really smooth in texture. When you feel the other one, it's a little bit rougher. That's really what you wanna look for. Step four, toasting and grinding the black pepper. You don't really have to do this, but it does add a, a little bit of depth of flavor to it. The important thing though, is to grind your own pepper. You could either toast your peppercorns in a dry pan before you grind them whole, or you could do what I did, is just to grind it and then give it a quick toast in the dry pan for about 30 seconds or so. That kind of wakes up the, the flavors because it brings out the oils in the peppercorn. Step five use less pasta water. In normal circumstances, you get a big pot of water going that's gonna use plenty of water for the spaghetti to be able to move around and not get stuck together. In this case, you wanna use a fraction of that because you want a high concentration of starch in the water. So when the pasta cooks, the water's gonna pull that starch out and that's gonna be what helps you make a creamy sauce. You can see when the pasta's boiling, on top you get a lot more foam and you can kind of see how the bubbles look. That shows you that there's more starch in that pasta water. Step six, 
Risotare. That means you want to make the pasta like risotto. You're going to use some water to cook the pasta in the pan. The way to do this is to take your pasta out three minutes before it's done cooking. Take some of that pasta cooking liquid now and add it to the pan where you toasted the pepper. A couple of ladles should be enough. I'm switching pans here because I, I want you to see the creaminess of it. With the pasta in this pot now, it almost is like risotto style. As that water reduces, it's going to get thicker and thicker. You'll see more of that starch developing. This is why you don't need cornstarch in this because you're going to have plenty of starch from the water itself. The pasta is going to absorb some of that water too, make it a little bit thicker. Then when you're tossing that pasta around, that's going to create the emulsion. It's going to make it creamy. Step seven. This is where you make a little bit of a cheese sauce, like a paste almost. What you want to do is set aside a little bit of that cooking water. You've got three minutes, so it should cool down slightly. Add the water now a little bit at a time, tablespoon by tablespoon until you get it nicely incorporated and it's like a sauce basically. You're looking for the texture of sort of a thick yogurt. Step eight, making the sauce. This is where all this comes together. This is kind of the tricky part. What you want to do is when you've tasted the pasta and it's al dente and it's done, you have enough liquid in there. At this point, maybe even add a little bit more of the pasta cooking liquid if it looks a little dry, but you take it off of the heat. This is important. Let it sit for at least 30 seconds to a minute off of the heat before you add the cheese into this. If it's too hot, it's going to cause it to melt. It's going to separate and get stringy. Worst case is if you leave the heat on and you put this in, it literally will separate and get greasy. It's okay to have a little bit of that stringiness but you don't want it to separate. Kind of push the pasta aside a little bit where you expose the liquid. This will give you a chance to see if you've got enough there too. If, it, if you see the bottom of the pan you need a little bit more water. Add that cheese paste that you made right into that spot there so that it incorporates right away into the water. Then start mixing vigorously. Get it nice and mixed. You want to create like an emulsion. As it's all incorporated you're going to see it start getting creamy just keep tossing it until you get that right consistency. And that's it. This is looking exactly how we want it. It's nice and creamy. We're ready to plate it up and enjoy it. All right, now that you have all the secrets, you're ready to make your own cacio e pepe. Nice and creamy, exactly the way you would have it in Rome. The same concepts that went into making this pasta you can now use to make a sauce out of anything. That's the beautiful thing about Italian sauces is that they're not really sauces, they're condiments. So whatever you have, you can use these techniques to now make your favorite sauce. With that in mind, we're going to leave you with some links to some other pasta videos that I've got on the channel. If you're interested to learn more, make sure you check those out. We'll see you in the next video.